Uh, what is the uh, the big difference on set from this one compared to the first one? What feels different? Oh man, on set? Yeah. You know, I on the first one, I felt as though a lot of the crew, much of the cast, didn't really know what we were doing. You know, like I talked to I talked to a lot of the crew members who worked on the first one, and they were like. I was really kind of surprised at the first movie, and I think that was what the first movie really had, not only with the people who collaborated in making it, but also audience members. It's a big surprise. It, it was unexpected, and so second, the second time around, we, we felt the momentum, you know, and we felt expectations, and 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 um, so that felt different. People knew that we were making a sequel to a movie that was really well received and really and re highly regarded. So. So that that felt different, and it was exciting as an audience to come in, sort of knowing these characters and yeah. just being excited to revisit them. Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. I think you know, there's a certain amount of expectations um, that people will have in the second movie. I mean, because because the last thing in the world you want to do is not give people what they want after committing to and and falling in love with the fir with the first movie, and we do give them exactly what they want, but in a way that they could never expect. So in that regard, we get to again be unexpected and get to again be surprising. When did you start to learn the track listing for Awesome Mixed Volume? You know, I didn't, I didn't get so deep into listening to the tracks on this movie as I did the first movie, because the first movie I would have had, Peter Quill would have been listening to these, these songs for 20 some years. And in this movie, Peter Quill's only received the songs a couple months earlier. So I didn't, I didn't get so heavy into ingraining them into my psyche. I listened to them a few times. And then again, and then even more so uh, this time around, we listen to them on set. I'd have them in my ear in an earwig while we're while we're playing out a scene, so we can always feel the rhythm of the scene. Kind of, it would be just beneath the surface, you know. And the and the songs play a very, even bigger part in in the storytelling process of this of this second movie. Cool. Uh, could you tell me about your first encounter with Kurt Russell and what that was like? Man. It, <sighs> Immediately, I just wanted to I just wanted to start talking to him about things unrelated to the movie. <laughs> I was just wanted to talk to him about like, you know, even even unrelated. I we just I just wanted to talk about bow hunting. I knew he was a bow hunter. I was like, okay, hey, you're a bow hunter. Me too. So our first interaction was probably two or three days straight of talking about the outdoors and our shared passion of the outdoors. And um, you know, it's interesting because there's a moment that happens when you meet somebody who's an icon, somebody that you've known for years who does not know you yet. And uh, really, uh, it's really heartwarming and, and maybe my, the most proud you ever feel is when you, you realize that person considers you a peer and you know kind of takes you in as a friend, gives you their cell phone number, <laughs> no big deal, I got Kurt Russell's cell phone number now, I text him, hey, t hey Kurt, hey buddy. Yeah, he'll get back to me a couple days later. It's pretty cool.